It has been a minute. How is everyone doing out there? Let's hope the notifications go out okay. Looks like there's two people in here now. Seven. Linda, how are you? Good to see you. And there you are, Drew. Good to see you here. All right. I'm glad to hear some people are getting notification. Plugs, what's going on? All right. So it's definitely working here. So let me know how is the audio? I also, um, there's a new setting on here that um, in order to chat, you have to be subscribed. Um, so that way people just can't roll into the channel um, and post all kinds of junk. Um, you have to be subscribed for at least, a, at least a minute to post a comment. Thank you, Drew, for letting me know. Appreciate that. Oh, sorry to hear about your back, Linda. Thank you, Matthew. I appreciate that. All right. So, man, it has been so long since I've streamed. It just feels weird. It just feels weird. <laughs> Matthew said, one minute, make it a year. Then if somebody accidentally unsubscribed and resubscribed, they wouldn't be able to comment for a very long time. You can set it to like five minutes or a half hour or something, but I just did the one minute to make sure somebody wasn't just trying to subscribe and then just leave. Just subscribe and leave a mean comment and then leave. Hey, Vaughn, man, what's going on? Hey, Coit, how you doing? Yes, Elaine, your first notification in months, probably because this is my first live stream in months. Did a few normal videos, but not a whole lot. Hey, David, how's it going? And thank you. Hey, John. All righty. Um... <laughs> Looking forward to the live stream lasting till around 3 a.m. Uh, I don't think so, but uh, I wouldn't take my word for that because I've said that before. All righty, so um, we're going to relax tonight. We're going to just chat about whatever, and I'm going to go through some coins. So while I'm waiting for some people to get in here, um, I guess uh, I could just start getting ready to uh, do the hunt. I have some pennies and I have some nickels from three different banks, as you can see in the title. And um, we'll be giving something away to the highest uh, super chatter as always. It's been a long time since I've done this, but I do like to give something away to the highest super chatter every time. Uh, hey, bud. Hey, Jack. Hey, Mike. Good to see everybody coming in. Um, so yeah, let's, let's just kind of get started. Let me uh, uh, grab a few things here. So um, this is something I've had for quite a long time, and um, it's time to find a new home. So to the highest super chatter tonight, I'm going to be sending this. It came in a coin collection I bought a very long time ago. It's a bicentennial uh, gold U.S. constitutional uh, stamp, still in the or original package. And uh, it has the canceled stamp that it was sent in as well, the normal issue one. And uh, you can see right here, postmarked 1987, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And um, the, the envelope is not in great shape, um, but there it is. The stamp itself is in perfect shape. very reflective because of the case that it's in. And um, I didn't even look up the value on this. I have no idea what it's worth. Um, time to find a new home. I've been cleaning out. And uh, a while back, I ordered something. I have no idea what. I can't remember from Thailand, but I cut this off. I'm going to throw it in as well because it's gold also. It's um, a stamp from uh, Thailand. 
I think it's a hundred bot. Looks like it's from 1999. So I figured I'd toss it in as well. Going to put it in this envelope and ship it out to the highest super chatter of the night, whatever that may be. And uh, anyone who super chats, oh yeah, this is still up here. You get a dunk. You get a dunk as usual. It's been a long time since I've uh, done some dunks. Oh, Linda said, I do like that map. Yeah, that was, uh, you, we couldn't see it where I used to stream in the farmhouse, but I used to have that in my office there. But yeah, it's moved over here. So once, I, I keep saying this, eventually this will all get painted white, then that'll really pop. Vaughn Man said, any weird snacks tonight? Uh, I don't really have much here. And I just had a huge uh, lunch at Panda Express today, so I'm pretty full. Not sure how much munching I'll be doing tonight. New Freedom said, with your knowledge of pennies and nickels, it it, it easier uh, for you to do these. Uh, I mean, pretty much any, it's not really hard to do any coins. I like the half dollars because they're just easier to look through because they're bigger. Um, I don't like dimes because they're super small. But yeah, pennies and nickels, um, I like looking through them. You can find good stuff in pennies and nickels. So who's going to be the first super chat of the last like four months to get us started? Uh, Drew, I already took care of that before the stream. <laughs> um, and I guess since I haven't streamed in forever, subscriber of the month for December will go into the uh, little plexiglass uh, display. The last subscriber of the month, it was probably uh, for August or September, probably August, I think. It was uh, Mustang Dave with the $24.99. Boom! So Dave will get dethroned tonight. All righty. So uh, let, let me get the setup ready and I'll, I'll show you guys the coins here. Let me uh, just let me get everything set up here. You got to take my printer down. We'll use the usual setup. And I'll show you what I got here. So this was two different banks of the same branch. We have 10 rolls of pennies and 10 rolls of nickels here. Uh, all but one roll of the nickels is customer wrapped here and all of the pennies are um, machine wrapped. And then same thing from a different branch, except these are all machine wrapped, 10 rolls of nickels and 10 rolls of pennies. Uh, no customer wrapped. Let's move this down here a second. And then the last bit is 10 rolls of nickels. No, 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 excuse me. I think it's six rolls of nickels and 20 rolls of pennies uh, from a completely different bank. And um, we'll just throw all this up here. So we got quite a bit to go through tonight. <laughs> Drew with the $2 super chat. I'm broke. Enjoy. Well, you're even broker now. I appreciate it, Drew. Let's go ahead and give you a dunk. Let's get all warmed up. The basketball needs air. Look, it's like really, really flat. That's all right. Oh, let's stretch out. It's been a long time. Oh. Oh. All right. We're going to go. For the elbow and the rim. We're going to dunk extreme here. Ah! <laughs> All right. That was fun. So Drew is the highest super chatter at $2 at the moment. And uh, I'll hang out in the chat a minute and then we'll go ahead and get my gloves and get started here soon. How's that tooth coming along, JD? 
Is this from before? I don't remember if we were if, if there's a joke behind that. I don't know about no tooth. Jason, yes, it has been way too long. John Boone, how's it going? Matthew said, so it's bag, not boxes, Cole. Yeah, exactly. Got a lot of bags tonight. No full boxes. Still trying to track down some half dollars. That's why I tried these banks today. Um, my dad has an account open with them, and I used to a long time ago. Long story, but they terminated my accounts a long time ago. Um, and um, they're, they don't, they're not able, they will not order half dollars. Um, so I still have to try to find another bank that'll get me half dollar boxes, but I, I can get, I can get pennies, nickels, dimes, and quarters anytime I want, not in massive quantities, but I can get them. Uh, so that's not a problem. So I figured we do it tonight instead of just streaming without uh, doing just talking. I figured we'd go through some coins as well. No, Drew, it wasn't terminated for inactivity. It's kind of a long story. Um, like for when I signed up, my business activity didn't meet like the paperwork of when I signed up or something. Cause I used to send all sorts of bank wires to like different countries around the world and stuff when I used to do a lot more uh, reselling. So they just didn't take kindly to it. Probably thought it was suspicious. They gave me a 10 day notice and then just closed my accounts. Gary, how's it going? I'm trying to wait, make my way up the chat here to see what I missed. Didn't miss too much. All right. All right. So we can go through some coins. Um, I don't know how many people are going to get notifications tonight because I haven't streamed in so long. Um, so there probably won't be a lot of people here, which means I get to uh, spend more time focusing on who is in the chat. Uh, the channel is growing slowly, even though I haven't been posting a lot recently. Um, I'm still gaining a few hundred subscriptions a month, which is nice, even though I've been uh, fairly absent. So uh, thanks, everyone, for sticking with me. And hello to anyone who's new out there who may be stopping in. Jason said, when are you going to meet up with Bird Dog? Um, I, I meet up with Bird Dog frequently now that he's not too far away. I have a little bit of bad news, uh, not <laughs> not regarding Bird Dog, but um, I... Uh, I did film a bottle dig with him, but I think all of the files were corrupted, so I don't think I'll be able to post it, which is a big bummer. But um, I did shoot a bottle digging video with him that I don't think uh, any of the footage is salvageable. Uh, so that's a bummer. But all right, let me go ahead and get my gloves here. Chief Allegre, how's it going? Been a long time. Channel 7 said, hey man, what would you do with the 1943 copper Lincoln one cent coin in G grade condition? Um, I would retire. Um, no, if you think you have a real one, you'll have to, uh, first of all, do the magnet test to it and um, you know make sure the date doesn't look funky compared to a normal 43 steel. And if you think it checks out in all those categories, you're going to have to have an expert uh, coin dealer take a look at it to uh, let you know if they think it's real because there's a lot of fakes out there. All right, let's get my fancy coin roll hunting gloves on here. These are a lot better than them vinyl gloves, that's for sure. Okay, which way am I going here? This way, there we go. Uh, it's not with the shortage. My bank merged with another bank and they changed a lot. And now the, now the tellers don't do all the ordering. It's more of a centralized thing, so... Unfortunately, it had to do with, um, well, one of the banks I used locally was BB&T, and they merged with SunTrust, 
and then changed the name of the bank to Truist. And shortly after they did that, I wasn't able to order boxes anymore, which is a bummer. But I, I may email corporate to see if they'll order some for me directly. I haven't tried that yet, but I know the tellers uh, aren't able to order them. So, oh, well. All right, we got 36 people in here. Not too bad for a spontaneous live stream. And, uh, yeah, let's get with it. Let's just go through some rolls. Let's see what happens here. Um, let's see. I'll let you all pick in the chat. We'll, we'll do. Um, we'll start with one of these bags first. And uh, I'll put this down here um, so you can all you all can see a little bit more. It's slightly up there. All right, so bag one or bag two, pick in the chat. We're going to start with bag one or two. And then put whether it should be pennies or nickels. So bag one and bag two. The customer wrapped her in this bag. Customer wrapped her in, there's some customer wrapped nickels in bag one. Two, one, one, two, one penny, one, one nickels, one, one. So it looks like one because of the customer wrap. Now somebody put pennies or nickels. Okay, we got pennies again. Two. Oh, pennies. Okay, close here. One. Okay, one in pennies. We're going to start with bag one. We're going to do the pennies and then the nickels. So I'm going to set this aside. And roll down. And there they go everywhere. All right. Um, I know this is kind of discombobulated, but this is the way it's going to have to be. And I'll check for enders as we go. Um, you can see some a copper on this end. So the, none of these are uncirculated. So we may have some stuff in these rolls. But here we go. First coin roll hunting in quite a while. And we got a you know pretty decent mix of copper in here. So maybe some Wheaties will show up. Like that one looks pretty old there. Like a 60s, you know, maybe a 60s copper, the newest. I'm going to have to go slow here. Well, see, already a 61, 61D. So I think we're going to hit some Wheaties tonight. I think so. Hopefully something even better than that, of course. Who knows? And that one that I saw from the edge that I said was at least from the 60s it is a 64. So, yeah, we've got copper in here, so that's good. That's good. All right, where's the top of this bag? Got my bag all set up there. Hey, 45 people in here. Not bad. How's it going, everyone? Okay. Quite a few 2020s, but there is copper mixed in. There's a 1960D, so that's the oldest one so far, <laughs> and <laughs> of course this was going to happen, right? 1959. Unfortunately, it looks like this one got run over a few times. Yeah, you all knew that was coming, right? 1959. First year issue. Channel 77 with the $5 super chat. Big shout out to Treasure Quest 100 exclamation point. I appreciate that, man. And let's give you a super chat real quick. And you are the highest super chat so far. So if you are the highest super chat by the end of the stream, you're going to get the bicentennial gold um, U.S. Constitution stamp with the irregular issue stamp on it, too, that's canceled in the original envelope from 1987. Envelope's not in great shape, and of course, an extra stamp from uh, all the way from Thailand. That's going out to the highest super chat tonight, and that is you so far. So let's give a dunk. Oh, can we do under the, under the leg? Should we go right for it? Let's warm up a little bit more first. Let's do a tomahawk. 
No, I'm going to go. Yeah, let's do a tomahawk. Ah! That felt good. Man, did my collarbone pop. Getting all the muscles loose. That felt good. All right. Tom, what's going on? Rose, Vince, good to see everyone here. All right. Next roll of pennies. Joe says, I hope you find a 31S. I do too. That would be nice. Looking like some more copper in this roll. So uh, sweet. Good to see you back, David. All right. Nothing looking too swift in this roll. The first half, that is. John, it's always nice to find a dot. Oh, that's why I look through half dollars. We just had a penny explosion. Of course, I'm out of... Uh, it's been a while since I've done this. All right. I don't see any wheat pennies on the floor. So there's a 1968. I'm going to pick a few of those up. I won't be able to get them all now. There's a 2021. Going to be looking for 2022 pennies pretty soon, I guess. I'm just going to grab all the ones that are right here on the carpet. We'll get the other ones later. Uh, is that a wheat penny? Nah. No Wheaties on the floor. All right. Nothing there. Yes, Patty. I absolutely love still pennies. I have personally never found one in a bank uh, roll, but maybe we'll find the first one tonight. Yes. The, the, the famous coin explosion. Rose said, new sub with ton of questions. Stumbled on you after Rebel Capitalist live stream. Well, good to see you, Rose. And next roll. There's some really nasty, dirty zinc pennies in here. I can tell you that. I don't know why there's so many of them. There's a 64D. Rose said, what should a beginner seek? Are you talking about coin rule hunting? Uh, try to be a little bit more specific on the, on the questions, and I'll, I'll try my best to answer them. Come on, let's get us a wheat penny here soon. There's another 64D. All right, another roll of pennies here. I'm doing like half the roll at a time and then punching the rest out. Whoa, we got a pretty nice find right here. I saw it face out at me right here. This was actually unexpected. It's a wheat penny. I'll let you all guess in the chat what date you think it is. Um, and I'll, I'll set it aside here in the palm of my hand as I look through the rest here. It's a pretty nice first find, to be honest. Wow, this is actually pretty nice, too. I like the toning on this. It's got full wheat lines on the wheat ears. It's going to be at least a... Man, this is closer to... EF. It's at least a high-end, very fine coin. And um, check the date on this. 1937. Really nice detail on Lincoln. Very clean coin. Nice chocolate brown color. 1937. Unbelievable. Don't see the pre-1940 too often in coin roll hunting. And look at the detail on that.
That's actually a pretty nice find right there. Um, Value-wise, very, very common coin. Um, come on, focus out on me. Okay, get out the famous water bottle. Is it going to work? Is it going to work? Focus out. Come on. What is wrong with this? Come on. There we go. All right. Uh, Value-wise, I don't know, probably 10 cents or something, uh, but a really nice find. All right. Let's see. Uh, rows on pennies, you want to look for uh, wheat pennies, which is anything prior to um, uh, 1959. Of course, anything with the wheat ears on the back. Anything that's not a normal design regular penny. Of course, Indian heads. Anything older than 1959 for sure you want to pull out. Um, there's other things you can look for, but that's mostly what you're looking for for pennies. Um, nickels, mostly you want to look for um, coins that... Um, have a mint mark on the back of the Monticello because they're silver. They were only minted from 1942 to 45. They're 35% uh, silver. They can pop up. Um, I personally keep all the nickels before 1960. Some of them can have a little value. Of course, you want to pull out all the old Buffalo nickels. Um, generally, you know, for pennies and nickels, anything before 1960 is, is, is a good find. And of course, you can look for errors. I don't really focus on them too much. And my favorite to look for, through is half dollars because anything that is 1970 or earlier is going to be either 40 or 90% silver. Um, and of course, you want to look for the really shiny proof coins with an S mint mark. Even if they're newer as well, they can have some collector's value. There's a lot to look for, um, but I'll explain more as I go through the nickels. And um, hopefully as I'm going through the pennies, you can learn here. But of course, anything you see like that, 1937, I found, pull that out. And um, it's a start. Oh, I didn't even do the last half of the other roll. Let's 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 go back to that here first. See if that uh, had any friends. See, check this out. There's some really nice like zinc ones in here too. There's like an uncirculated 1997. Let's see if we can get this to focus there. Check that out. So this is these are actually some interesting rolls. That obviously hasn't been in circulation very long. Now, that's not something I would keep, but it's worth pointing out if you start seeing stuff like that in the rolls. Uh, it could be an interesting mix here. Oops. And I dropped it, of course. That's all right. All right. We got another wheat penny in this roll, guys. Go ahead and guess the date in the chat. Um, I'll just give you a hint and say it's not as old as the last one. And wow, while we're waiting, even though this is corroded, check out the luster on this 1963. We're actually into an interesting batch of pennies here. It's corroded, but look at the luster on it. That's interesting. Interesting. And I'll uh, show that wheat penny here in a moment. There's a 61D copper. Oh, and uh, Rose, while you're here, a lot of people do save them. I don't because it takes a lot of effort. But technically, every copper penny uh, that was minted, some of the ones in 1982, but all of the ones pre-1982 uh, are copper, and they are worth more than a penny each. Now, it's currently illegal to melt them down. But if the U.S. ever stops making the penny, then it's someday it will be legal to melt them down. There are some people that save every penny prior to 1982 that they find in these rolls and throw them in big uh, buckets. You can do that. I mean, it's it's an investment. You're getting like, you know, I'm just ballparking right now, but you're probably getting, you know, just under two cents worth of copper uh, from each penny uh, for a penny. So there's more. The last I checked, there was more copper in a penny uh, than what a penny is worth. And here's the wheat penny. Boston baked beans hit it right, nail on the head, plugs hit it. I mean, of course, it had to be the the one of the most, if I think it is the most common wheat scent, the 1944 Philadelphia. And pretty much in, you know, all wheat scents in bulk are pretty much worth like four cents a piece, just as like a collector's value. So, Always going to pull them out. And this is the roll we already started. We're going to keep going on. Dave, 
David said environmental damage. Exactly. Rose said, I found a 1946 quarter in a roll once. That's awesome. All right. Wow. There's 71 people in here now. Pretty awesome for a, there's another really dirty copper scent from 1968. Uh, but it may, you know, in the near future, in a few years, the U.S. may stop making pennies. So saving that copper, uh, seeing where uh, the economy is headed and monetary policy and, you know, the minting of coins, it you know, maybe people that started saving them 20 years ago were a little bit ahead, you know, a little bit, um, well, naturally they're ahead of the curve, but, um, you know, not much payday waiting 20 years for, you know, uh, the U.S. to stop making pennies. But now, realistically, it could be a time if, you know, if you're in a pinch and you want to start doing some investing in, in you know, passively in your free time uh, and just having some fun in the process, it may not be a bad time to start uh, saving the copper pennies because you can get them for face value. And, of course, you can pull out the wheat pennies and anything you find that's uh, worth more than face value. Uh, where can you sell them to get the four cents, says JAP. Well, basically, in order to for them to be profitable, you'd have to save up a bunch of them, you know, a hundred or two, and then you could sell them on eBay. Um, if they're common ones, normally coin stores won't buy them because, um, you know, they don't really need them. Uh, but basically, for the common ones, you're just going to save them. And when you have a, you know, a nice size handful of them, you could sell them on eBay or something or make date collections of them, you know, save 30 different coins of different dates and do it as like a starter collection, sell them online. Uh, but there's nowhere you can like really cash them in. Um, I don't really know if you, dealers even buy the common dates in bulk. They may give you two cents, three cents, you know, may, maybe double face value on them. But uh, it's, I keep opening rolls while I have half of the other roll ready to go. But yeah, for the common stuff, it's definitely a bulk game, you know. You can't just take them somewhere and get, you know, four or five cents a piece for them. And here we go again. Of course, <laughs> there's another first year issue, 1959, except this one's from Denver. And that's one's in pretty good shape. So you guys know I'm going to find those all the time because that is the coin that will not leave me alone. Uh, but to, is, let, let's just be honest, though. As far as making money is concerned, coin roll hunting is not going to make you rich unless you find something exceptionally rare. Um, and the the most opportunity to make actually a little bit of cash on the side is going through half dollars. It's very hard to find banks that will give them to you if they, you know, or order them. Hopefully, they have some sitting around that they'll sell you. Um, but Half dollars are my favorite to go through. I have a jar full of silver that I've you know, found over the years. Um, I'm just not able to get them right now, so we're just doing some pennies and nickels for fun. In order, I always tell people my favorite to go through are half dollars first, then nickels, because you can find a lot of interesting thing in nickels. So it's half dollars, nickels, then pennies, then quarters, then dimes. Or I should, yeah, or I should say dimes, then quarters, because it's easier to find silver in the dimes. Uh, but yeah, half dollars are, are definitely my favorite. Hey, Tyler, how's it going? Plug says, hey, JD, you found a 1920 silver napkin ring last Sunday. This is huge. It's awesome. That's amazing. That's a great find detecting. I need to get out and do some swinging soon. All right, nothing there. All right. Got a couple rolls of pennies left here, and then we'll switch over. I keep doing it. I literally have four half rolls of pennies open. I keep forgetting I'm setting them down and didn't, not doing the other half. All right. And there, I just lost more. This is hilarious. All right. We're all do already doing pretty good, though. I already got two Wheaties out of not too many rolls. So if there's nothing else in the pennies, we already did all right. Hopefully we can get some either a silver or like a buffalo in the nickels tonight. That would be nice. All right, nothing there. Let's do this. Other roll I missed. 
Make sure I don't throw any pennies out that get stuck in there. I've done that before. Okay. So both of our Wheaties were in the same roll. That's how it happens sometimes. And I dropped another penny. They're just flying all over the place. Can't hold on to these things. There's a 1962D. Oh, really? Copper cent is worth three cents, says David. Wow. I, I remember it being around like 1.7 or something. So copper must be really up right now. I check the price of gold and silver on occasion, but I usually don't look at copper. Oh, I opened another roll while there's still one open. Oh, well, we'll get, we'll get the hang of this here soon. Uh, JAP, just a, for online for a free guide, my favorite free coin guide is use numismedia.com. And if you want to check silver value of like the melt value that's in a silver coin, uh, use uh, Coinflation, as uh, David pointed out right there. Coinflation is a good site for silver value. And I see date up a wheat penny poking out at us right here. Go ahead and guess the data in the chat. I already saw it, so I'm not going to guess. I'm going to set this aside and look through the other ones. But we got our third wheat penny of the night, and we're not even through the 10 rolls yet. So that's sweet. Weedy number three. All right, and that's going to be it. Tyler said 1935. Feeling uh, generous on the oldies. And um, 31S says, Joe, I wish. Silver Wrench said 1941. A little bit newer, guys. And when I say a little bit newer, a little bit newer than the last one by one year. Nineteen forty-five. Another common date, but it's still a wheat penny. All right, so that is wheat penny number three on the night. I'm very happy with that. Copper spot is four thirty-six. Nice. So yeah, guys. Maybe a time to start saving the saving your copper pennies, pull them out of circulation. There's a 68D. Sixty-four. So yeah, lots of copper in here. <laughs> Acoustic shower. Does the guy never turn on the heat in the house? I prefer to just wear more clothes in winter and not wear my uh, not run my heat super hot. I can't stand if the heat is over 70. I I just I can't stand it. I'd rather have a hat on. And also my sunroom has a ton of windows and it's, there's no insulation under it because it's a patio under here. So this is the coldest room in the house. So uh, I usually like to wear a little more clothes when I'm live streaming in here. Cause I, I'm usually sitting down and my feet are on the floor. So my whole house isn't freezing cold. This just happens to be the colder room in the house. Oh yeah. Let's finish this roll here first. All right, get the few I dropped here. And this is, I got one more penny roll after this one. One more roll after this one for the first batch. I have a lot more pennies, but just the first batch here. Like it says in the title, three different banks. And the first bank was good to us here so far. And no Wheaties there, and another penny down. Tyler said, I found a 1913 wheat penny my change from the grocery store. That is awesome. That is awesome. <laughs> Look like a confused burglar. Yeah, actually, I got, a, I got some new hats on the way. Uh, my old camo hat 
uh, rest in peace. Uh, it finally bit the dust. It like fell apart. So um, I'll be ordering another camo hat. I got a different one on the way. Nineteen sixty three. Not quite a weedy. Okay. I got another wheat penny. Came out face down. Reverse. Um, so I'm going to look at it and guess the date. Uh, it doesn't look like a super uh, old one, but it could be a late 30s at the at the oldest. Um, I'm going to guess... I'm going to guess 1948 on it. Go ahead and guess in the chat. We'll look at it in a second here. Wheat Penny number four for the night. What's up, no one? Shane, how's it going? Where I been? Ah, just doing stuff. Just taking a break from YouTube. Okay, we got a guess for Joe. What Joe's thinking that 31S is going to come out. Drew said 41. We got a 46, 56, 58, 52. Let's take a look. I said 48. We got A. Here we go. I think this is our first mint marked weedy. Uh, Tyler got it. You just got the wrong. You just uh, didn't get the mint mark, Tyler, but you got the date. We got a 1946 D. 1946 D. So no duplicates yet either. We got 44, 45, 46 D, and a 1937, which actually the 1937 is still the one in the best shape. So I got a half roll of pennies left here, and then we'll go over the nickels. For anyone just coming in, any super chat of any amount, you get a fancy slam dunk in the hoop and a high super chat tonight, which is $5 so far. But high super chat tonight is going to get the gold um, U.S. Constitution uh, bicentennial stamp from 1987 in the original envelope and a bonus stamp too. And let's see if we got a weedy here in the last of the pennies. I'd like to see an Indian pop up today. There's a parking lot casualty that's been run over like a million times. All right. All right. So four wheat pennies out of 10 rolls. That is pretty good for my area. Um, yeah, actually, that's pretty good for my area. Okay. So next we have nickels. I have nine customer wrapped rolls, which customer wrapped rolls are usually either really good or really bad. So we'll see what happens on these. And I have one machine wrapped and um there's a 2020 on the end and then an ocean view on the other end those are 2006 right we got an ocean view ender and of course this is come on focus out slowly all right So let's, uh, let's go ahead and start into the nickels. Let me look here in the chat a minute. Acoustic Shadow said, honorable, hey, honorable mention for getting the D. There, there you go. You get the honorable mention, even though you're uh, like, what, 40 years off or 32 years off. <laughs> High Tone Drifter Kent, how's it going? Arnold, how's it going? All right, let's start into the nickels here. Whoa. These all look very new. I see a lot of 2020s, so at least we got the customer wrapped because it looks like these nickels are going to be mostly newer ones. 2020, 2020. Okay, there's some circulated ones mixed in, uh, but there's a lot of 2020 nickels in here and 2021s. Okay. So at least we got customer wrapped ones if these ones aren't looking so swift. Yeah, they're not all new, though. Oh, actually, I see a really old reverse here. Um, I'm going to say this is going to be a pre-1950. I didn't look at the date yet. Go ahead and guess in the chat. I mean, pre-1960. That actually looks older than that reverse that's common on the 1964, which is the most common nickel ever minted. That one, to me, looks like an older one, though. Just the way that reverse is kind of slicked out. It's clean, but it has that nice gunmetal gray that the older ones get. I'm going to guess that this is a 19, uh, let's see, 
19. I actually think that could be a later late 40s one. I'm going to go 1948. I think it's a 1948. Um, I'm going to set it aside a second and finish going through these other ones, and then we'll take a peek at it. All right. Chat says 1953. Um, Drew says that screams 1940 or 39. It could be. I actually thought it might be like a 40 or 46. Um, but it just looks so good. I'm like, well, it's got to be maybe late 40s. Joe, it's not a 44. I can tell you that because it's not silver. I'm going to look at it right now. Ah, oh, I was going to say this. I was right, though, on it being late 40s. It's a 1949. I was going to say that, but at the last minute, I changed my mind and said 48. That, that's how you tell I've been doing this way too long. I can tell the general date within a few years sometimes just by the tone of it and the detail. 1949. This may have a D-mint mark on it. We'll see. Nope. Oh, yeah. We already looked at it before. I didn't look for the mint mark before, but I knew there wasn't one. So it's a 49 Philly. Decent condition. That's a nice coin for a 1949. All right, we're having a good night here. <laughs> Coy Uniting Drew said, join the 49 Club, found a 49D at the Hood store yesterday. <laughs> there you go. All right, let's see what's in these customer-wrapped ones. Let's peek at the end here. Uh, Anthony said, what do you do with the regular pennies that are just face value? I take them back to the bank. Um, I have a dump, what I call a dump bank. Um, they give out plastic bags and you put your account information on them and, um, I just redeposit them to be counted and they credit my account. So it doesn't cost me anything extra just to, uh, put the ones that I don't need back into circulation. That way I don't have a house full of coins or run out of money. Um, so at least these are circulated. Of course, there's a 1984 in the end, but these customer wrapped are a lot easier to, uh, open up and, um, all the rules seem about the right height. So I, I don't think we got shorted on any like we have in the past. Um, you got to watch them customer wrapped ones. Sometimes the banks don't even count them and they just give them back out. The shoddy banks that uh, are lazy. All right, man, these rolls are so much easier to go through. Customer wrap. You don't have to take the wrap. Like you don't have to peel the wrapper. Um, so there's no really new, I mean, yeah, there's a mix. I did just find a 2021. So these have been rolled recently, but they're customer wraps. So there may be something hiding in here. SSO Lone Wolf said, what's a good metal detector? There's a lot of good ones out there. It's hard to say. I'd have to know a little bit about your price range, um, but there's a there's good metal there's good metal detectors in just about any price range these days. And I dropped a nickel now, but it looks newer. And I dropped another one. Let's see. Let's get us a silver war nickel. That would be nice. All right, nothing in that roll. If you're just coming in or if you're here and haven't hit the like button yet, go ahead and smash it. We got 50 likes on the button right now. kind of average nickels a lot of ones in the 80s um 80s and 90s hopefully something older pops up here though at least they're circulated you never know what'll pop up in the circulated coins 
Yeah, these are mostly 80s, 90s, early 2000s nickels. Seventy-seven. Not even seeing many from the sixties in here, or any. I don't think I've seen any from the sixties yet in these customer wrapped ones. We know a sixty-four will pop up though. The nineteen sixty-four nickel is the most. So even though it's kind of older, never save the nineteen sixty-four nickels. They just made too many of them. They're not worth anything other than face value. All right, I think I may have just got a good find. I don't know yet. Speaking of which, I did just find a 1964, by the way. Um, I'm going to have to inspect this more. I'm actually a little bit shocked, to be honest, because at first glance, this does look genuine. Um, maybe not. This is going to be hard to tell. I don't know if this is damaged or if it's clipped. I'm going to set it aside here a second and finish this roll. If it's real, it's double clipped. Um, wow. Boy, that's tough to tell. I hope you're still in here, Drew. It's clipped by the date. And by trust. And that might be a genuine mint error. I have not found one of these in a very long time. That looks like a legitimate... Le those look like legitimate clips, except this one on the edge is a little bit funky. That looks pretty good up here, though. Man, I'll tell you, it's a little bit rough on that bottom edge, though. It doesn't look like a clean clip. Oh, that's tough to tell. I don't know. John said double clip for sure. I have several. That's awesome. Um... I think this one looks legit to me. I don't think that's damage. That looks like a very clean clip on both of them. Because there's no scratches around it by the lettering or anything. That's unbelievable. Oh, and it's a 1971, not a 77. Because it's clipped right by the date. This is probably the best thing I'm going to find tonight um, if it's legitimate and error and not damage, which I think this is a legitimate error. Um, it's a well-known error, clipped coins. Um, wow. Yeah, it looks really good around the damage. There's no scratch. Well, I say damage, but unintentional damage, not post-mint damage. Um Drew, if this is real, tell me what you think a double-clipped 1971 nickel in this shape would be worth for everyone in the chat. I'll let you give your best guess at it. I think it is legit, though. That was quite the surprise. All right, well, that's definitely getting set aside. That's probably one of the best things I've found in nickels in a very long time. Thank you, John. All right, so we're doing pretty good with pennies and nickels tonight. Acoustic Shadow said $1.50. I think it'd be worth a little more than that, double clipped. Um, just going off the top of my head. So Rose, uh, clipped is like, it's just an error that um, it shouldn't have come out of the mint like that. It, when it was stamped, it was actually... I mean, it was clipped. A chunk of the coin came out. <laughs> it wasn't stamped completely round. I don't remember exactly what causes those errors. Um, but oh, <laughs> Acoustic Shadow said that was my offer. Well, then we know it's worth at least $1.50. 
Um, I'll probably keep that one, throw it in a flip. Uh, Drew said, for whatever reason, all the clip nickels I've ever found, most of them have been 1971s. I think 15 to $20 is fair value. Well, there you go. That's awesome. And the fact that Drew is saying that most of his, that he found our 1971s means it was common that year. Um, so that would, I think, would be a little more evidence to say that it probably is real if that it was a common year that they were clipped. Um, so there you go. A double clipped nickel, 15 to 20 bucks. That sounds about right to me. It's a pretty nice find. I, I, I'm not going to lie. I haven't found anything that good. That may be one of the best finds I've ever made in nickels. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I don't think I've ever found anything in nickels that would have a higher value than that because the silver nickels are still only worth about a buck a piece. You know, they're fun to find. Um, I found some proof nickels and found a, coat, a few, you know, nickels that had numismatic, numismatic value of a buck here, a buck there. I found a few buffaloes, but man, that's the error. Is, that's probably going to take the cake. Hey, Copper, all good to see you. John said also said almost all of mine are 70 ones. Then I'm pretty sure that's that looks like a legit clips nickel to me because there is no other scratches or damage. Like you can tell somebody didn't like hammer it. There'd be damage elsewhere. It looks like a legit double clips nickel. Pretty sweet. Well, this is turning out to be a great stream as far as finds tonight. Okay, thank you, Drew. I'm actually going to take a look at that link real quick. Okay, double clipped Jefferson. Yeah, it sold for a little less because it was wasn't a buy it now. Oh yeah, and the clip on mine's in the same same spot, the date, and then through trust. Thank you for that link, Drew. That was perfect. Um, so mine is actually in better condition than this one, a little bit. Yeah, mine has a little bit of luster on it. So one in a little bit lesser condition than mine sold for four dollars and seventy five cents plus four forty five shipping. So what four eight nine a little over nine bucks um but you can get more if you don't list a you know you can get more for them if you wait for the right buyer but there you go one that just sold on ebay in september for a little over nine dollars so there we go that's a sweet find and there's a 64 that i was talking about we don't like seeing the 64 nickels Okay, plugs. Good to hear. You can be active now. You you just did you just? Oh yeah, plugs says, "What's that clip coin worth? If it's real?" Well, we just went through it, but yeah, it is. It is almost certainly real. I'm almost convinced of it now. I'm like 95% plus sure that that is a genuine clipped nickel after looking at the link that Drew sent. Mine's very very similar to that, and it's the same date. So, yep. We have a legit double clipped 1971 nickel. And I dropped another nickel. I'm alive, bird dog. And I just found a nickel worth like $15. <laughs> At least $9 to $10. But mine's in better shape. So we'll say minimum on mine. This has got to be worth at least. We'll say at least, I mean, minimum 10 anyway. It's at least 10 bucks. $10 nickel, $9.95 profit. It'll go toward my new bike. <laughs> All right, there's a very smooth looking 1976 that scared me for a minute. I thought it was going to be older. Another 1964. That is literally the best find I'm probably going to make out of nickels in my life. Eighty-seven people in here now, awesome! And we've been here for almost an hour, so uh, I almost said congratulations to everybody that's here. Boy, would that have sounded conceited! I meant uh, hello to everyone in here. How are you all doing? I'm a little rusty. I've been streamed in a long time. Whoever, whoever wants to super chat. You get an awesome dunk. 
And uh, the highest super chat tonight that's going to get the prize, uh, the highest super chat is $5 so far. So if you're going to send $5, make it five and a penny. And then you might just walk away with the um, the gold U.S. Constitution bicentennial stamp from 1987. Because whenever I end the stream, whoever's the highest super chat is going to get it. And I have no long, no, no idea how long I'm going to be here tonight, but... We're going to go through probably all of these coins I got here, and I still got a lot to go through. Noah, what's going on? Robert, how you doing? Wes, looks like more notifications are going out. Probably more people getting home from work, too. I started a little bit early. We got some great finds tonight already in pennies and nickels. I'll do a recap for everyone here in a little bit. Um, really good stuff tonight, actually. I'm surprised. We did good in the pennies, and... One find from the nickels just made it all worthwhile, but uh, nothing in that roll. So the customer wrapped came through on the nickels. This is the, oh no, wait, I still have half roll here, I said here. So this one and then one more roll, the customer wrapped nickels. Only two finds, but out of 10 rolls, that's not bad. And one really good find. Terry said, what am I looking for in nickels? I'm looking for silver World War II nickels. Also, anything older than 1960, and um, uh, and then error coins. So, a little bit of everything. A lot of unique things can pop up in the nickels. But yep, one of my best, well, my best nickel find ever. I made live here in the stream tonight, so that's pretty cool. All right. Somebody needs to send a super chat so I can do a dunk. My feet are getting cold. I need to get my blood circulating. I got cold floors in this room. Oh, got a nice find here. Last coin in the roll. I saw the date, um, so I won't show it to you guys, but I will show you the reverse, and you can guess the date. Dennis, how's it going? I th Drew, I bet you can d guess the date on this one. It was yeah. It has the it old um. It has an old um. Uh, coin wrapper mark two on it too. What's the word I'm looking for? It's been way too long. The coin counter circle of death. Ha, Drew! I knew you would narrow it down to those two years. From two of the probably the biggest coin nerds on YouTube, and uh, you are right on, Drew. I had a gut feeling you would get this one with that worn, slick kind of look, very dull looking. It's a 1940. Very appealing coin. 71 years old. Oh, 81. 81 years. Two years off being a Buffalo. Well, they did make some Jefferson Nichols in, in 38, so you could say three years. All right, so quick recap for anyone just coming in. I did 10 rolls of pennies and 10 rolls of nickels. Um, most of the nickel, all but one of the nickel rolls were customer wrapped. All of the pennies were machine wrapped. I found two 1959 pennies. I found four wheat pennies out of 10 rolls, which was really good. Um, one of them being... A really nice, let me grab it here, the oldest coin of the day so far, a 1937 in really nice condition. And then from the 10 rolls of nickels, I got a 1949, a 1940 that I just showed. And then what's going to be the find of the night, no doubt, is a genuine double clipped mint error on a 1971 with some luster on it. A genuine double clipped error nickel. Never found a double clipped in a roll before. And that definitely has some value, probably around $15. That is a very uh, sweet find for circulation. And we're just getting started. 
<laughs> Drew said, when you've been coin roll hunting since you were five years old and now you are 23, you really start recognizing things. I would hope so. Uh, but yeah, some people just don't have the knack though. Um, even I know a lot of people have looked at coins for a long time, but they just, there's something about having an attention to detail. It's like, I don't know. I'm convinced it's something you're either born with or you're not. Or maybe it's developed at a very young age. I was kind of always like that. I always looked at the finer details of things rather than the big picture. Hey, Terry, uh, thanks for stopping by, and uh, I'm glad you're enjoying yourself. I'm going to grab a drink here a second. All right. I'm going to take a break for one second and just do a fun dunk for everybody. And if it goes in, somebody has to super chat, though, right? We'll try, uh, I'll try under the legs. I'll try under the legs, stretch a little bit because I've been sitting down a while. I forgot. I still have half a roll of nickels left. I didn't even know those were in there. Ah. Oh. All right. Okay, let's try this. Ah. Oh. All right. Not bad. Okay, let's get some of the casualties off the floor. Some of the pennies and nickels I've dropped. All right, nothing nothing going there. Let's finish this half roll of nickels I forgot. All right. So while I'm looking through these, some people do save 2009 nickels, or pretty much any coin minted in 2009, because it was a very low mintage year uh, for the modern coins. I usually don't look for the... Um, the coins like that, but a lot, some people do set aside the 2009 coins. I mostly look for the older stuff and the blatant errors, um, but you can keep the 2009 coins as well. If you want to pull out everything interesting, you can look for them, but it takes more time uh, to, to search for those as well. All right, guys. Um, let's see. Wow, Drew, that's awesome. A 1958 uncirculated. Don't see those in circulation much anymore unless somebody dumped them out of a collection. All right, um, so here's where we're at. You all can pick the next source from this, uh, from this a different bank, but this uh, same, uh, same, uh, not branch, what am I looking for? Same bank, but different branch. I have another 10 rolls of penny, 10 rolls of nickels, all machine wrapped. And then in here, from a completely different bank, I have six rolls of nickels and 20 rolls of pennies. I think they're all machine wrapped. Um, yes, they're all machine wrapped. So you all pick what you want me to go through next. This is this will be bag one. This will be bag two. And then you have to say also, do you want me to look through pennies or nickels first? So bag one, bag two, pennies or nickels. Dave Cone 710 with a $5 super chat. Uh, yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> it has been a while, that's for sure. All right. I'll do another dunk while I'm waiting for everyone to pick. But appreciate the $5 super chat. And I will say, you tied the highest super chat, but you were the second one. So if the stream were to end, I still have to give the prize to the first person who super chatted $5. I just have to point that out. All right, let's see. What kind of dunk can we do here? I'm just going to do a real trippy dunk. I'm not going to tell you exactly what I'm doing. Did I trick you all thinking I was going to dunk into the other hoop? All right. Let's see what we got here. Uh, one cent, bag one, two pennies, bag two pennies, bag one nickels, bag two pennies, two. Looks like it's going to be bag two and start with the pennies. That's what I think the general consensus is here. 
All right, let's get this down here. <laughs> Thought I was going to jump through the roof. Yeah, I got some energy tonight. Okay, so bag two. And then we'll go with the pennies. We'll, we'll, we'll just leave that here. All right. It's kind of a little... It's all this stuff. I don't know what all these white little specks are. I don't know if they came from the rolls or what. See all them white specks? Is that paper? I don't know what that is. It almost looks like little paint chips. I have no idea what that is. Oh! My, my tote's falling apart. That's what it is. I think it's my old Planet Fitness bag. Yeah, there's like little squares on there. Little hexagons. Oh, did they seal this? It, they did. It's sealed. All right. Come on. Wow, that's some strong plastic there. All right. And there goes the roll. So I knew that was going to happen. Okay, at least they're, they're circulated. No, never mind. I think that stuff's... I don't know. I don't know where it's coming from. Have a good night, Rose. Thank you for stopping by. <laughs> dandruff says plugs. Yeah, it's my dandruff so bad is falling out the bottom of my hat. Right. All right. Um, see if we have any enders. Don't see any enders. Um, but I didn't check them all. All right. We're just going to start looking. I'm going to start looking. DJ Frank says, I hope you find some Indian sense. I hope so too, but I already found a super rare nickel tonight, so everything else is gravy. Oh, the, man, we already got a wheat scent in the first roll. Okay, go ahead and guess the date in the chat. It came out reverse first, so I can't see the date. To me, this looks like a 19... 40, yeah, it looks like another 46. I'm just guessing based on how it looks. Let's see. Let's put it up to here. Let's get a closer look. Guess the date in the chat. That could be a 50s one. I'm going to go 1952. I'm going to go 1952D on that one. That's going to be my guess. I'll set it aside and look at the others here a second. All right, we got a guess for 57, 49, 49, 52, 46D. I, Tyler, I was going to say, yeah, another 46. That was my first guess, but let's go ahead and look at it. It's a 44. I was right. I did think it was a mid to late, a, a mid 40s one, like a 46 to 47, but I just mixed it up and said 52. But either way, I would have been wrong because I was going to say 46. But it is another 1944. And, uh, we're doing pretty good tonight. This is much more, event I dropped another penny. This is much more eventful than I was expecting, to be honest. Okay. Now, hopefully, we can get a World War II era nickel next. And when we get through the nickel rolls, we could always switch and Tell you what, we could, um, let's do that. I'm going to set these aside. Let's just go back and forth because we got 10 of each. Let's just go back and forth between the pennies and nickels. Let's have some fun. Let's literally alternate here. Ooh, some really corroded ones in here. I don't know if that's going to be a good or bad sign. We'll find out. Probably a good sign if there's some weird nickels in here. Whoa. This is totally a metal detector dig. That is the most metal detected coin I've ever found in circulation. 
<laughs> Somebody put it back into circulation with all the dirt still on it, caked on it for years. Um, I'll have to clean that up and make sure it's not old, but the relief's high. That's probably a 1964. It looks like a 64. Like it's just screaming 1964, the relief on that. It's like green underneath. I'm going to go clean this off real quick. That's kind of fun. I just found a metal detected nickel in this roll. Um, we're having a very interesting night here. And there's a 1964. Bird dog, why are you dropping all your change back into circulation here in Northeast Tennessee? Are you really that mean to spend nickels that are that cruddy? All right, I'm going to see if I can clean this off really quick. Um, I guess I'll have to ruin one of my towels. I'm almost certain this is a 1964, but it could be older. We'll see. I'll be back in one second. I'm going to clean this off. Just a little bit of water. Look at all that dirt. Um, but, guys, I've been searching coins too long. Just to know from the, the dirty re the relief of a coin, even though it was dirty, I knew it was the dreaded 1964. I've been coin collecting way too long. All right. That's fun. That's a fun find, though. But it's, it's going back in a circulation. It's only worth five cents. All right, where were we at? Okay, we done with that nickel roll? Yeah, we're done with that nickel roll. Now we're on to that roll of pennies I started opening. <laughs> yeah, right. It's not my detector find, Drew, unless it's one of my dirty coins. No, I, I'd never spend it without cleaning it off to see the date. There's no way that date was visible. There was so much dirt caked on it. Um, so somebody was spending their coins without checking the dates, which shows you they were probably a cherry picker and only cared about silver because whoever dug that nickel up didn't even clean it off to see the date. Yeah, definitely wasn't one I dug up because I never put a coin back into circulation without checking the date. I did have a video up where I spent... Uh, my dirty coins that I dug up on McDonald's for my one dig or die video. And I filmed myself giving them a handful of change I had just dug up for a burger. That was fun. There's a 1965 penny. A lot of copper in these penny rolls again. All right, now we're going to switch to a nickel roll. Rose, hell, with a $10 super chat. Thank you for the lesson. Hope to see you online more often. Thank you very much, Rose. I really appreciate the $10 super chat. I'll go ahead and give you a dunk before you head out for now. And um, you may, um, you'll have to check in later and see. You may be the highest super chat tonight. And, you know, you might get that gold stamp. So uh, um, just go ahead and check back in. And, um, uh, whoever's the highest will have to send me an email, which is in the description below JD's variety channel, gmail.com. That's my email to contact me. Um, so let's go ahead and give a dunk here. Where's the ball? Here it is. Mm, okay. What can we do here? Ah, try that again. Misfire on the first one. Self-pass. 
from the angle. Ah! All right. All righty. Okay, let's back into the nickels here. <laughs> yeah, Bird Dog spends mercury dimes. He's like, I only want Civil War bullets. Bird Dog gets tired of digging mercury dimes. He's like, this stuff's too new. All right. Let's see if we can see if this bank is going to keep with the decent fines. We already got one weedy, so that's good. Nothing in the nickels. Back to the penny roll. Start with half here. Yeah, when I'm at Bird Dog's place, he has like random coins sitting in bins. He's like, these aren't from the Civil War. It's like, it's like I was just going to throw these in the trash. <laughs> oh, nothing there. Tenna said you might have to turn on the heat in that room. I've never tried this. Heat, the gas is turned off, but that's just like a supplemental heater thing. Um, no, I'm, I'm comfortable. I'm comfortable. Except my feet are a little cold. Yeah, Bird Dog, it looks like you're getting uh, some offers on your Mercs. I'm going to beat everyone out, and I'm going to offer 50 cents on each Merc. Man, this one fooled me for a second. A black nickel. 1981. And there's a 1964. And now alternate to a penny roll. And I accidentally just found a 2009. Wasn't really even looking for him, but it came out other side first. There's a 2009 penny. I was talking about those being lower mintage. That's not in good shape, but we'll set it aside. Oh, got to finish the other half of this penny roll. I'm going to bid 60. I'm going to raise you a nickel, plugs. 60 cents. Back to the nickels. Ooh. Drew went $1.25. He's up in the ante. Another 1964 nickel. Oh, we got kind of, I mean, it's not a great find, but it is at least a find. We got a pre-1960 nickel. Go ahead and guess in the chat. And yep, I knew what the mint mark on that one was going to be just by looking at it. So uh, I'll show you the reverse first while everybody's guessing the date. It is a Denver mint mark. And it, oops, and it is a 1959. So we cracked the 1960s. 
and this batch of nickels. And back to the pennies. You're awful, bird dog. Tell you what, we should probably do that. Just make a big pile of all your dirty coins. And like, I, sh I should make a video of like cleaning them up and seeing if you have anything rare. It'll be like an unsearched uh, coin video from bird dog's garage. Oh, ooh, I got an interesting find here. Here, here, here now. I have a Queen Elizabeth, the second penny right here. Who wants to guess the year on that one? Now, I do not find these here in Tennessee often, and that's an older one. Mmm, I'm going to guess 1962. I can't remember when they stopped these ones. This could be from the, fifth, the late 50s, mid to late 50s. I hope so, but they're pretty common in the early 60s too, like the 64s. I'm going to guess 1962. It could be... Around in there. Here it is. Young head, Queen Elizabeth II in pretty good shape. Let's turn this around here. Is it a 62? It is. I guess the date. It's a 1962. I was hoping it was going to be from the late 50s, but man, pretty nice find right there. All right. Well, that made my night a little brighter. Some interesting rolls tonight. <laughs> Plug said, I went, I went and dunk for myself. There you go. Ooh, a lot of copper in here. There's a 63D penny. There's a parking lot casualty zinc penny. There's a 68 copper. But no Wheaties. Alright, back to the nickels. What a variety tonight. A bunch of Wheaties for 2009. Queen Elizabeth II young head, a rare nickel, a couple from the 40s. The, the three-point shootout with who, bird dog? Myself. There's a birth year nickel for me, 1988. Uh, Steven, I can't promise anything, but if you want to send me uh, an email, you can. I haven't been detecting lately. All right. There's a 69. 68 penny. And over to the nickel roll. Are the US, Canada US borders open? I don't know, Drew. Um, I don't know if they're open again or not. I actually have no idea on that. I'm sure somebody in the chat knows, though.
if you're fully vaxxed. Oh, I probably shouldn't have said that. Bleep! Bleep that out. I didn't say that. Now my stream's going to be demonetized. Nah, not if I just say it once. 1964 and then an Ocean View nickel. Demonetized. At least they can't demonetize my coin roll finds. Take that, YouTube. You can take all my monetization, but I still have my clipped nickel. Da, da, da. Terry, my email is in the uh, the description of probably all, almost all my videos, but it should be in the description of this too. JD's Variety Channel Gmail.com. I still have the same email from the old channel name. Ew, some nasty corroded zincs in this roll. Ew. Ew, really nasty. This roll is full of nasty zincs. And a gasoline zinc. And I dropped a few zincs. Back to the nickel roll. We found some beef! No way. It came up reverse first and it has a D mint mark and it looks really old. I hope it has a date on it. This might have a partial date. I can tell you from the wear, this is not going to have a full date. But I'll show you guys the reverse of it really close. D mint mark for sure. It's quite worn. Unbelievable. If this has a date on it, this has got to be from the 20s. I think it's going to be a pre-1930, but a post-1919. It's screaming 1920s to me. And probably mid to late 20s. It's probably going to, I would narrow this down to say, I mean, it could be a little older, but I'm going to say it's screaming 1925 to 1929. Um, but if I had to put myself on the spot, I'm going to say, oh wait, a D mint mark would be rare if it's a 25 or a 26. So I doubt that that's in this role. I mean, who knows, but I'm going to say because it has a D mint mark, it's probably going to be late 20s. I'm going to go 1929D. All right, so I'm going to flip it. And it's a partial date. I am going to be able to tell it, even though you can't really see it there real well. I can see the gaps between between the last two numbers. Um, Drew's still here, too. He's going to be able to tell what it is, too, once I clean off this date area. I'm going to rub it off. I will be able to look at the the patterns between the uh, little gap in the last two numbers of the date there. But I think it is going to be a 29. I think the last two digits there, you can see the two and then like a little curve on the top. I think this is going to be a 29D. Um, but I'm going to do the old uh, use my shirt method to wipe this down to slick this surface off so I can see it better. And we'll just, uh, this is an old shirt anyway. We'll smooth that out so I can see it really well because there's some gunk on it. And uh, you'll be able to see it better. Um, but I'm pretty sure it is a 29D. Yeah, Drew already said 29D. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would have said 34D, except I think the 34D wouldn't have had as much wear. Um, normally the 34 D's have a full date. Yeah, it's a 29. 
It's a 29D partial date. I'm going to get it the best of a shot I can. You can see just the very, you can see the curve of the nine in the top to about the mid portion of the two. 1929 Buffalo nickel minted in Denver. And the only reason I can tell the partial date on this is I spent a long portion of my early 20s and late teen years inspecting partial date Buffalo nickels uh, like crazy and acid treating them. And I know what the patterns look like. And Drew does too. Oh man, I just knocked my, there we go. That's better. Um, so yes, it's a 1929D. Uh, pretty nice looking Buffalo nickel though for circulation. Unbelievable. 1929D. All right, I'll check out that link, Drew. Thank you. Hey, there you go. Perfect example. You're doing awesome tonight on the links. I think there's a little bit more on their date, but yeah, that gives you an idea. If you follow the link that Drew put in the chat, you'll be able to tell what a partial date looks like up close from somebody's photos. Um, yeah, man, mine looks almost identical to that. Mine's just maybe just a slight bit more wear. Very similar though, shockingly. 1929 D it sold for 99 cents plus a dollar 51 shipping. Oh, one of them sold. They have multiples listed sold on December 1st. Somebody just bought it recently. Um, but realistically, um, in this condition, that's like a 50 cent coin worth 50 cents, roughly. Um, definitely not worth a dollar plus a dollar 50 shipping, but, um, Yeah. That's probably like worth 50 cents. It could be a little more. A 29D is not a horrible date. Maybe 75 cents. Um, still doesn't beat that clipped nickel. It goes to show you, older is not always better. The rarest find I've ever found in a roll of nickels is from 1971, and we found it tonight. This is turning out to be an awesome stream. Hey, Marie, how's it going? Yeah, you'll want to watch this one from the beginning, Marie. A lot of good finds. It's been a really good night so far. Tyler said 8.37 million minted. So with a partial date, maybe it is worth a buck. Pedigree, yep. It's been a while since it's been JD's Variety Channel. Rest in peace. All right, so, okay, I didn't even finish this roll of, of, of nickels. Having a good night here. Oh, I see another oldie poking out at me. Date first, right here. It's a pre-1960. Go ahead and guess the date in the chat. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you for certain that mint, there's going to be no mint mark on this. I can tell from the strike of it. No mint mark. Guess the date. It's going to be between 1940 and 1959. Um, here, we'll, we'll play this great game with Drew a little bit more, see if he can figure it out based on the strike of it. Yeah, you might be able to figure that one out. Yeah, there's a few dates that one could be, though. But it, I knew it was going to be a Philly, and it's uh, a nice older one. I'll look through the rest before I should. Whoa! Dude! There's another buffalo. What the heck? I got to figure out which branch these nickels were from. I got to go get more tomorrow. Man. Hold on. Let me finish sorting through these real quick. Two buffalo nickels in the same roll and an older one. Unbelievable. First of all, let's show you this one. Drew, you got it right on. Perfect guess. Crystal clear, 1946. You are on fire with the guessing tonight. Oh, I didn't even notice that little chip on the top. Post mint damage. 
Very nice coin, but wait. Let's look at this Buffalo nickel. It came out reverse first. It's in better condition, and it has a D mint mark, and it's got about half of the horn. So this one might be that 19, well, I don't think it's going to be a 34D. This one has got to be a 36 or 37D. It doesn't have that look of the 38s. Normally they're more crisp. So my guess is this is going to be a 36D or a 37D. Because it's a little bit more worn for a mid-30s one, which I'm guessing it could be 20s, but my guess on this Buffalo nickel is it's going to be a 1936D. That's my guess. I'll let everyone else in the chat guess. Drew says 36 or 37D. We have a guess from Tyler for 37D. Linda said, I think you meant 1932D, but uh, Linda put 10,032D well before the medieval period. <laughs> I know you meant 1932. I will tell you, though, no, none made in Denver in 1932. So it can't be in 1932. There were actually no Buffalo nickels made in 1932. Um, so it can't be a 32. It would have to be a 31 or a 30. Or, well, there's, yeah. It, I don't, th no, there's no 31D Buffalo nickels. It would, um, but they didn't make any Buffalo nickels in 1932 or 33. But I'm going to go ahead and reveal the date now and see if it's the 36 or 37. I'm going 36. And right there, it is a 1936. It's got a little yellow streak on it. But I had a feeling that was going to be a 30s one because it had much more detail. Um, it's pretty rare to find these in circulation or anywhere for that matter with in really nice condition from the 20s or earlier. 1936, clear as day. No guessing on that date. 1936 Denver, Buffalo nickel. Or some people call them the Indian head nickel. I've always called them Buffalo nickels. Unbelievable. All right. I don't know if, which branch this one bag was from. I might have to get more tomorrow. I know which bank it was from. Uh, but each branch gave me the same bag, and I got the same amount from each bank. Um, I might be able to piece it together, figure it out. Um, might have to get more tomorrow. Wow, what a roll. A 1946... A 1936D and a 1929D in the same roll. So we're going to switch over to a penny roll now. And these are uh, machine wrapped. These are not customer wrapped. So somebody dumped some old coins locally not too long ago, it appears. Two in the same roll. Just unbelievable. There's a 66 penny. Oh, we got another find. Unbelievable. We are hitting every category tonight. Unreal. Unreal. It's I haven't found one of these in a long time. Check it out. I almost threw this back in as a zinc penny. This is crazy. A one cent coin from the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, 2006. That's a pretty coin. <laughs> oh, come on, focus. Hold on, we'll, we'll drag it out like this. Magic, magic. All right. That's a cool find. Let's see. One bah Bahamian dollar equals one dollar United States. So the conversion rate of that penny is still exactly one cent. I think, wait, am I looking this right? Yeah, one Bahamian. 
Bahamian, if I'm saying that right, one Bahamian dollar to a US dollar, uh, same exact conversion. Oh, or to be exact, it's if you had $100, it would be in Bahama money, it would be uh, $100 and four cents. So this is like, <laughs> this is worth 1.0001 cents, something like that. So it's ever so slightly worth more than a penny. I just, I have to run conversions when I find a foreign coin. So there you go. It's, uh, I hope there's more buffaloes in these uh, nickel rolls though. We got three left from this bank. Bahamian. I knew I was saying something wrong. Thank you, Christopher. I knew it was not Bahamian. Bahamian. That sounds, that sounds a little better. Oh, wait, I didn't finish my penny roll. Back up the bus. Finish the penny roll. Bahamian. Yeah, that's, I knew, I knew I was saying something a little bit wrong and I dropped the penny. Uh, 1968 copper, but nothing good. <laughs> True, bird dog. All right, come on. Let's see another buffalo in these nickels. That would be sweet. I can't believe there were two in the same roll. That was unbelievable. It was unbelievable. That was one of my worst puns ever. Maybe I can trick Bird Dog into trading him fancy uh, starfish pennies for his Merc Dime, so he might think he's getting a good deal. There's a 64. Okay, back to the pennies. I don't have any gummy bears tonight, plugs. I've got waffles. I've got super soft pretzels. I don't think we've done either of those on the stream yet. I could do a waffle with peanut butter. That's my new thing right now. I'm out of maple syrup. I know a waffle with peanut butter sounds dry, but I usually like to put a little maple syrup on it, real maple syrup, um, but I'm out of maple syrup. So I put like peanut butter on them. Lines always seem to hit in batches. All right. We're getting to the end of this. Come on. Let's see another buffalo. Let's get some beef. And another oldie. There's a 1960D and another oldie sandwiched with it. I'll show it in a second. It came up date first, so I couldn't guess. You might be able to get this one, Drew. Yeah, you can definitely, you might be able to get this one. Here we go. Guess the date. Here's the reverse. No mint mark. I already know the date. Of course, it's pre-1960. I'm looking in the chat. Matthew says 70-something. Drew said 40 or 41. Drew, pick one. 40 or 41. <laughs> yeah, you had to go 41 because the last one was 40. Good choice because it's a 1941. Very typical reverse for the 40s and 41s. Almost worn slick, but still a nice coin. All right. With all these old nickels coming out, there still might be a buffalo in that last roll. Oh, wait. I didn't finish these nickels. I didn't finish this roll yet, even. All right. Nothing in the rest of the nickel rolls, so we'll go to the last penny roll in this batch.
How many Wheaties did we get in this 10 rolls? Not a lot, right? Did we get any? Oh, yeah, we got one, I think. I think we got one Wheatie out of this batch of 10. Right. And then we got the Queen Elizabeth II. But the nickels were fire. The nickels were fire. Grant, we got a lot of good finds tonight out of the pennies and nickels. I found a rare clipped 1971 nickel worth like $15. I found two Buffalo nickels. One was a 29D, like six wheat pennies. A coin, a penny from the Bahamas, a Queen Elizabeth II penny, a 2009 penny, 259s, uh, nickels from 1941, 40, 46, 49. Just all kinds of good finds popping out tonight. Ooh, I almost lost all those. Here's a 62 copper cent with some luster. Like seeing those. But we're just going to toss that back, but notable notable but we have bigger fish to fry i'm not grant it's 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 true the two buffalo nickels were in the same machine wrapped roll with the 1946 all in the same machine wrapped roll right here on the live stream um pretty sweet i'll just really quick for anyone just coming in one of them had a real nice clear date on it too 1936 Denver and the other one's a partial date you can barely see the last pieces of the last two digits but it's definitely a 29 and um I'll, I'll show more later but um I found a really rare um well not like super rare but rare in the context of coin roll hunting a really rare double clipped planchet error so last roll of nickels from the second bank source and then we still got a bag of coins here yeah, Linda said still waiting on a war nickel. If we get a war nickel, we'll hit, hit we'll have hit just about everything that you can hope to. Of course, except the really old stuff like a V nickel or an Indian head. Um, but we can't get greedy. I mean, man, just so much good stuff tonight and not a whole lot of coins either. These are just loose machine wrapped and customer wrapped rolls that I just picked up today from a few banks. There's a 64 nickel. But this is our last chance at a buffalo probably. Probably because this is the last roll from the bank where the buffaloes came from. No quarter rolls coded. Just, uh, just, um, ooh, this one might be old. Uh, we'll, we'll, uh, I came out reverse first, so we'll play the guessing game on it. Just, uh, nickels and pennies tonight. I'm not a fan of dimes and quarters, but I'm glad I wasn't tonight because it's the nickels and the, uh, pennies that have been paying off, especially the nickels. So I have one here that came out reverse first that has a D mint mark. I'm not convinced it's pre-1960. It's probably a 63D. Um, that's my guess. You can guess in the chat. Hopefully that cracks the 1950s. I'm not convinced of it. Um, that could be like a 57D, 58D, 56D. But to me, I have a feeling that one's going to fool us and be like an early 60s with a Denver mint mark. I could be wrong. We'll see what Drew says if he's still here. I'm going to go 63D on that one, but it could be late 50s. Could be a 1960D on the button. Bruno said 60 right when I said it, right before I said it. So maybe it is a 1960. Drew says 62. Certainly could be a 62. I'm just going 63. I don't know. Something's telling me 63. Thank you, Sheila, for the $20 super chat. Nice finds. Have to go. Been watching. Awesome, Sheila. Thank you very much. You're the highest super chatter so far. You probably will end up with that stamp tonight. Um, so check back later when you can at the end of the stream uh, to see if you were the highest. But thank you very much, and uh, uh, have a good evening. So let's go ahead and flip this. Oh, is that, what is that, 55? 55, okay. So it did crack the 50s. I thought it was going to fool us. But it is from the 50s, 1955D. So a lot of oldies in this, um, from this bank in the nickels. A lot of oldies. All right, so let's do a dunk for Sheila real quick.
Let's do a reverse. Ah! I couldn't even tell if that went in. So for good measure, a lefty dunk. Oh, lost the handle. Ah! Ooh, Tyler guessed 55, huh? All right. All right, 82 people in here. Good evening, everyone. We're having a very, very, very good night of coin roll hunting. Um, I'm not going to do a recap now, but wheat pennies, nickels from the 40s, 50s, a couple buffalo nickels, a penny from the Bahamas, a rare double clipped nickel, um, Queen Elizabeth II penny, young head, uh, 2009 penny, such a variety, such a variety. All right. Now from my usual bank, we have 20 rolls of pennies and six rolls of nickels. I should have got more nickels because the nickels are really doing well today. And, I, and I've and i always liked nickels better than pennies. And I think maybe you all will start to see why now. Nickels can just put out some really awesome stuff from time to time. All right. And I haven't looked at the ends on any of these, so we'll do a little inspecting here. These are all machine wrapped. And there goes a roll. Uh, come on. Easy now. Okay. Check the enders here. They are circulated. I did know that. Oh, there's a copper one. What's the date on this? Got a 1966 penny on the end. I'm just going to check a couple enders. There's another copper. So, yeah, we got copper on the end, so that's good. And let's check some of the nickel. That's nah, probably from the 70s. It's all circulated. All circulated. Yep. All right. I'm going to get a drink here. Kent says, I keep copper. It's not a bad idea to keep copper if you don't mind sorting it. Plug says, let's go, Buffalo. Only six rolls of nickels. We'll have to hope more for an Indian head in the pennies because I got a lot more pennies than nickels from this bank. Three likes away from 100. Now one like away. Who's going to be number 100? Drum roll. Still 99. 100, there it is. Okay. Now it's 102. All right, let's start going through some pennies here. We'll start with a 70s copper ender. New bank, new rolls. Let's go. Definitely copper in here. Ha! Ha! We penny in the first roll. First half of the first roll. It came out date first, so I can't guess. Uh, but put your answers in the comments. What date do you think this wheat penny is? Yeah, it's about what I would have guessed in that range. Drew says 56D. Plug says 57. Kent says 47. 46 for Tyler. 57 for Bruno. 
57 for Grant. You all are heading in the right direction because it is indeed a 57D. Nobody guessed the mint mark, but yes, yeah, we're usually just us. Not everybody guesses the mint mark, but yeah, it was definitely a newer reverse. Um, and Drew missed it by one. Your streak ends, Drew, but you're on fire tonight. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that could have been a 58. It could have been a 56. I mean, the 56, 57, and 58 are all so similar. Usually when they're you have a lot of detail. All right, let's finish this roll out. Possibly a metal detector zinc, really dirty. Yeah, Drew, close enough. I mean, you can't really get much better than that. It's like we can't get it right every time. Your guess was well within an acceptable margin of error. <laughs> Let's see. All right. Nothing there. Finish the last half of the roll. There's a 64 with some luster. Like to see what's in these rolls or look like they're heading in the right direction. Maybe people have been dropping off some old coinage this time of year to Get some spending money for the holidays. This roll's kind of partially opened on the end. Well, it looks like all they're all going to come out at one time on this one because I usually open it from the other end. This one looks kind of old here. Hey, pulled this one out by the rim because it looked old. Now we got a 59 with luster. It's my third first year issue tonight, and um, that's a nice one for 1959. We'll set that aside. I picked that one out by the rim because it looked really good. I just got another 2009. Another 2009 low mintage. Different than the last one we found too. Have you ever got a 19, or 59 Weedy? Did they strike a couple of those? Yeah, aren't those the ones called the Mule Scents? Um, I've never found one, of course. There's a 66. Oh, I, I see a old looking one here. I'm going to uncover it. Actually, I'm going to flip it. I can't really show it to you here. I see one from the edges that looks kind of old. Oh, it's not. Oh, well, that's why it tricked me. I thought this was going to be a weedy. But it's another 59. That's the fourth 59 tonight. I thought that one was going to be a weedy, though. Very old looking, 59. 
Curse of the 59. Drew got it right. <laughs> Except we're doing pretty good tonight, so I don't mind finding the 59s. Not seeing anything in here. I'll open a nickel roll next to break it up a little bit. Ah. Ugh. I think I just got some. No, that's not hair. Some kind of black fuzzy something. I remember watching you with my neighbor back in early 2020. Well, he moved away to Florida. <laughs> Just Jeff, you missed a lot of goodies. I'll do a recap here when we get closer to the end. All right, let's do a nickel roll. Wouldn't it be something if a buffalo pops out of this source, too? I doubt it, but we can hope. Wow, these look mostly newer. Nothing in the nickels. Let's go back to the pennies. Sixty four D, sixty nine. No Wheaties, though. Sixty eight. Seems like the other bank was much better to us. There's a 63D and a ton of uncirculated shield sense in the end of this roll. Yeah, there's got to be at least one more wheat in these, though. I'm pretty sure there probably will be. But yeah, that last bank was the one that was good for sure. Two hours and ten minutes, roughly, I've been here. Time's really flying tonight. Oh, I'm, I've lost so many coins on the floor tonight. I'll be looking for wheat pennies in my floor later. I'll be coin roll hunting my floor. What's that one? Uh, 
Aha, got a wheat penny. Came out date first, so I already know what it is. I'll show it in a second and you all can guess. We did get another one. I'll show the reverse. Nice condition. Plug says 46. Jacob, how's it going? What's the weather up there? Uh, it was in like the 40s today and sunny. 46 says Coda. Christopher says 54. 50D says Tyler. 49 says Grant. <laughs> Joe still going with the 31S. No estimate old coins tonight. I don't find a lot of estimates on the East Coast here. Linda says 49. Got some good guesses. Um, I'll leave it to the chat, says Drew. All right. Some good guesses. Very close, but nobody got it right on the mark. It's a 51D. Fifty. Oh, come on! I gotta pull it out. I gotta remember to pull it out slow so the camera focuses. There we go. All right. So how many wheat pennies do we have so far? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight wheat pennies. Or no, wait. Is one of these a fifty-nine? Oh, wait, seven, my bad, because four of these are 59s. We got four 59s, seven wheat pennies, one from the 30s, three from the 40s, and three from the 50s. So pretty good range. The Queen Elizabeth II, I'm just kind of sorting these here for a little bit. Two different 2009s, the Bahamas penny from 2006, and then the nickels we have one, two, three... From the four, no, four from the 40s, two from the 50s, two buffaloes, one from the 30s and one from the 20s, and then the 1971 double clipped planchet. Wow, quite the variety. Hey, plugs, chat 99 cents so I can get a, a break and do a dunk. You got to pay your fair share. You can't be just just trying to leech off of all my streams for free now. You can't just come all here and think you're going to get all this entertainment for free. All right, let's open a nickel roll. Yeah, you see the edges of these nickels? They look mostly new, you know, new-ish. So, definitely not as old as the last bank. Not as much old stuff mixed in, but they're circulated, so you never know. There's a 1963. You never know. Come on, plugs. 99 cents. Pay up. You can't be that much of a cheapskate. You just told me you found a, a big hunk of silver the other day, too. Whoa. See what I just said, guys? I just got two oldies in a row in the first half of this roll, and they both came out date first. Unbelievable. There's got to be a war nickel coming. Okay. And they're both... Where'd it go? They're both Philadelphia. Two oldies in the same roll. Well, let's do one at a time. Guess the date of both of these. That's number two. And this is number one. Doesn't show up really well from that angle. I gotta come from this way to get the light. Come on, there you go. Drew says a 40 and a 47. Tyler says, 40, Linda says 46 and 48. Tyler says 48, 38. 
Bruno says 3635. They would be Buffalo nickels if they were that old, but that would be really nice. Kent says, I have no idea. Grant says a 46 and 48. With all these nickels from the 40s and 50s, you would think we hit a war nickel, but just wasn't meant to be. But I will take two Buffaloes over war nickels any day. All right, so it's actually a 40. And unfortunately, Drew, not a 47, but a 41. But you got one out of two. It's a 40 and a 41. So a lot of the really old 40s ones popping out. And that was the first half of the roll. Two from the 40s. Unbelievable. We're hitting 80-year-old coins like crazy tonight. All right, let's uh, let's do let's go back to pennies. Tell you, it's the it's the nickels are killer tonight. Got to find a war nickel. There's a really nice copper sixty-seven, really smooth looking. That sounds awesome, Christopher. Ah, dropped another penny. Okay, let's go back to nickels. Ew, that one's got some kind of gunk on it. There's a 64. Okay, we'll play a little game with this one nickel. This is one of those that has a D mint mark and has that fuzzy looking reverse. This is one of those weird ones that can be from the early 60s or it can be from the 50s. Now, the last one was actually a 55 when we did this. But I actually do think this is one of the tricky ones that's from the early 60s. It's going to tease us. If I can get to focus on it there. There you go. Yeah, I'm going 1962D on that one. That's my guess. Drew says 59. I'm going 62. That's what Drew said last time, 62. I said 63, and it was a 55. I'm going 62 on this one, 62D. Now Drew's going 64D. Too late. You already put your guess in. No, I'm just kidding. I didn't flip it yet. You can change your mind. I'm going 62. Grant agrees with me. Linda says 61. Let's hope it's from the 50s. Is that 63? It's really fuzzy looking. It might be a weak strike. Oh, it is a 62. <laughs> I got it. That was really, I had a feeling. I just had a hunch. That's a really fuzzy looking coin. It's like a weak strike. Very blurry and worn too. And it has the ring of death from the roll crimper. That's the word I was looking for earlier today. I couldn't figure it out. Crimper, the roll crimper. All right, what well, goes back in the bag? But it is a 62. Oh, Drew said it looks like a dryer coin. Could be. Oh, didn't finish the other half of the nickel roll. I knew that one was going to be older, but I flipped it anyway because it was borderline. We got another oldie here. We won't play the guessing game on every single one, but uh, I just got, I just pulled out a 1958D in nice condition. Very, very common year and mint mark though. 
Oh, I forgot we had that penny roll that rolled off earlier, too. I haven't really been out detecting in the last several months, um, but I hope to get out and do some digging here soon. These penny rolls have so many newer ones in them. Well, at least newer compared to the other rolls. The other banks were a lot better today. Let me get the roll that fell down here before I forget it. <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Another one. Oh, what is going on? 1959D with a hint of luster. That is the fifth 1959D tonight. Or 59. They're not all Ds. Likebot says, I hunt for clipped coins. Did you run across any? I don't know if I'm being trolled, but for anybody that wants to see it, the double clipped 1971D. In fantastic condition. Probably my rarest find ever in a box of nickels. Value roughly about 15 bucks, probably. Okay, let's see if we can get a weedy in the last half of this penny roll. There's a 64D copper. Okay, let's do another penny roll, then we'll go back to nickels. I like the nickel roll so much more. I'm addicted to nickel rolls. Pennies are kind of fun, though, but man, now that we found two buffaloes tonight, it's like, man... There's a 63D. It's like, I got to get more nickel rolls. Ah, I see. You're up there in Canada. All right, let's do another nickel roll. Oh, I dropped the first three. Oh, well. There's so many coins on the floor. There's a 1963. Came up a verse first, though. There's a 62D I thought looked older for a second. 64. Okay, back to pennies. ASM says, so what's your point? Every old coin isn't worth much more than face value, so why bother? I just do it for fun. I don't do this to make money. This is strictly just hobby and something fun to do while I'm chatting on the live streams. It's better than just talking. Um, I found one coin worth the one nickel worth about fifteen dollars tonight, which is one of my best finds ever in nickels. Um, it's rare to find anything of actual value unless you're finding silvers in the half dollars, which is why I like to look through half dollars. The two buffalo nickels are probably worth between fifty and seventy-five cents a piece. Um, so tonight is actually a pretty good night for hunting hunting nickels and pennies. I probably found. $18 worth of value over face value tonight, um, which is pretty good. 
for just uh, a casual hobby. Um, but yeah, um, nobody should get into this hobby thinking they're going to get rich or something. Uh, it's just for fun. <laughs> and I have another half roll of pennies I forgot to have open over here. I keep doing half rolls and starting a new one. Nothing there. Yeah, Coda said, look on the ground, see if you dropped a good coin. I probably will take a break and do that in a second until I, before I go through these last rules. It's not a bad idea. Nothing in that roll. Ugh. Oh, and I got so many wrappers. Okay, let's pick up some coins. At least all the ones that are on my carpet. Okay, let's see if I missed anything good on my carpet. No. All right, more pennies. I found five 1959s tonight, and there are now 59 people in the stream right this second. The rolls are slowing down. I just dropped two coins that bounced off my leg and both went into the bag. Right on. Sounds good, Drew. Once I finish these, <laughs> I'll probably hang out for a while. I don't have anything else planned, so I, I might stick around for a while. I don't know. I might build a Lego set on the stream that I got out of the dumpster. <laughs> oh, man, there's a 61D. If not, I'll save it for the next stream. There's a 68D. Just can't. Can we squeak out one more weedy? Yes, like bot. I found you did miss. I found. Uh, I'll give a recap here in a second because I'm almost done. So if anyone who missed some of the stream earlier, I'm going to do a major recap here as soon as I finish these rolls, and then I'll chat for a while, hang out with everyone, maybe build a Lego set. Uh, show some of the stuff from the dumpster, from the dumpster video. And then, uh, I'm not going to stay really late tonight. A couple older looking ones in here. We'll see in the nickels. They could just be nothing though. Yeah, it was nothing. Sounds good, Drew. Sounds good. Uh, there, that one might be pre-1960, but I don't think so. I'm just going to flip it. Oh, and that one might be too. We might have a late 50s out of those two. Let's flip them both. No, a 64 and a 69. Double wah, wah, wah. Sixty-four penny. Come on, we get we got to go out with a bang. Definitely open the right rules to start. That's for sure. Oh, there's a sixty-eight with crust over the date, so I couldn't tell. All right, we're down to our last two rolls. Can we get a weedy or an old nickel out of the last two? And I dropped a penny. We're running out of coinage. Ah, oh, almost. There's a 61D. Come on. Come on. Let's get one more good find. It's 
going to have to come down to the nickels because there was nothing in that penny roll. Here it goes. The last roll. Can we get a war nickel in the last roll and make it a really awesome night? Ew, ew, ew. It looks like we're going to end the night with sticky black stuff in hair. Ah. Not the way I wanted to end, but I got another oldie. I saw it poking out at me. I already see the date, though. And I still have some more left in that roll, so we're not done yet. Ooh, interesting. Interesting. If you didn't leave yet, Drew, guess the date on this one. Just like I said earlier, don't get a lot of S-mint marks on the East Coast. Here is an old nickel with an S-mint mark. Go ahead and guess the date in the chat. This is a nice one. I'll show the date in a second. I'm going to look up the mintage of this. Wait, let me de-blurry this. Hold on. Let me, let me de-blurry this for a second. There we go. I'm going to look up the... Uh, Mintages, okay. Fifty one S. Drew says forty S or forty one S, leaning toward the forty S. Well, Drew, you should have leaned to the forty one S, but very good guess nonetheless. That was a lot of rhyming. But it's a 1941S. Um, I mean, it's not rare, but mintage of 43 million, which is not too bad. But yeah, one of the more common older S mints. Uh, but yeah, I rarely ever find those. So that's actually pretty good. S mint, old S mint. So we, so, uh, yeah, man, pretty cool. All right. So here is going to be the major recap for everybody who came in late, everything I found. So let's, let's total up everything I looked through tonight from three different banks. I hunted a total of 10, 20, 30, 40, 40 penny rolls. So $20 in pennies, which is just a little short of a box. Um, 40 penny rolls and 26 nickel rolls. So thir or 26 nickel rolls would be $52 in nickels. That's what I hunted today. And here's what I found. Oh, no, wait. There's more. I did, forgot the last half roll of these nickels. But wait, there's more. Place your order now and get free shipping. There's a 64. Wow. Here's a really shiny 64D. But it still goes back. But wait, there's more. Wait, this was an ender. We're not done yet. The last coin of the night. Literally, the last coin of the night. We get to play guess the date one more time. Thank you for that, Drew. I don't think I ever che checked for the small and large S in the 40s. Guess the date on the last one here. Another pre-1960, no mint mark. I think this was an ender, but I didn't check them all. Great way to end out the night. Drew says 1940. Likebot says 37, that would be a buffalo. 49 for Grant, 46 for Tyler, 40 for Linda. Well, you got it, Linda and Drew, but I'll tell you what, you're on a roll, Drew, because it's another 1940. They're popping out of everywhere tonight. All right, so that's it. I'm out of coins, except wait, before the wrap up, I have to finish coin roll hunting everything that I dropped. 
which I tried to look at everything I dropped as it was getting away from me. So there's probably nothing good here, but I got to pick up all these coins. And there's a couple the whole way over here, or at least one. And I think that's it. Got all the escapees. Oh, wait, there's one here under my cord. Okay, I think I got all the escapees. There's some copper in the escapees. And nothing good, though. Okay. Yes, but wait, there's more. Okay, so uh, no, there's no more now. It's just the wrap-up. So tonight's finds in 40 rolls of pennies and 26 rolls of nickels. We have um, two 2009 low mintage pennies of uh, different varieties. I never remember what those are called, so I'm not even going to try the specific types. Um, I got a one cent 2006 from the Bahamas. Very cool. Haven't found one of these in a very long time conversion rate of like it's worth like 1.001 cents so it's pretty much identical to a u.s penny in value um i got a queen elizabeth the second young head canadian which these are pretty rare to find um in my area in tennessee i don't normally find the older canadians this far south oops forgot them canadians flipped the wrong way eh. Queen Elizabeth II Young, young Head, 1962. Very nice coin. I got five 1959 pennies, which is quite the haul for only 40 rolls. Um, I have seven wheat pennies. I have three from the 1950s. And um, Hold on, I got these mixed up. Scratch that. I got two from the 1950s, a 1951D and a 1957D. I got three or four from the 1940s, a two 1944s, a 1945, and a 1946D. And then I got a beautiful, this is the first one we found, and I think it was in the first roll, wasn't it? 1937 with incredible detail. It's the oldest penny of the night. Stunning full wheat lines. Beautiful toning on it as well. Kind of like dark to light. And I'll leave that fuzzy a second. Then over to the nickels. Over to the nickels. Uh, so I got three nickels from the 1950s the oldest one from the 50s being a 1955 denver and then i got a whopping two four six eight nickels from the 1940s and five of six of them there's three from 1940 and three from 1941 one of the 1941s, as I just found a few minutes ago, was an S mint. So very, very early 1940s nickels. And then the other two were a 1929 or 1949 and a 1946. And then Le Crime de la Crop. Three best finds of the night. Buffalo nickel, 1936. And that'll clean off better. A lot of that black stuff is just loose dirt. These will clean up very nice. 1936D, that's probably around in fine, yeah, fine, at least fine condition, fine 12. Decent, decent for 1936D. I found a 1929 Denver Buffalo Nickel with a very weak partial date, but it's definitely a 1929. You can only see parts of the last two digit digits, but it's, it's definitely a 1929 looking at studying the patterns of it. You can see the mint mark there. Much more worn. 
And the find of the night, believe it or not, is not either of those Buffalo nickels. It is this double clipped 1971 D Jefferson nickel clipped by trust in the date in two different spots. And it has some luster on it. So it's a decent grade as well. Very nice example of a double clipped nickel. Looks like somebody took a couple bites out of it. Somebody got hungry at the mint. They got hangry because they didn't get lunch in time and nibbled on the nickel. You can clearly see the, there's no damage or like there's no scratches around the clips. This is definitely genuine, not post mint damage. Two very distinct clips. And that should run about $15 in value. Ballpark estimate. All righty. So that is it for the coin roll hunting part of this stream. I have no long how how no idea how long I'll stay in chat or do something else. Uh, but for anyone who came for the coin roll hunting, that is all. Um, so thank you for watching. So if anybody skips on out, uh, thank you for spending some time here. And if you before you skip out, though, if any of you are leaving, be sure to hit the like button on your way out. 114 likes tonight. And I'm getting a drink. But first, this is the bag of rejects for tonight. Big bag of rejects. Oh, and one thing for anybody who wasn't here, I actually found a metal detected nickel. It was so crusty, you couldn't even see the date. Somebody didn't even bother to clean it off, but it was a 1964 nickel. Figured I'd mention that. I did find a metal detector dug nickel tonight too in one of the rolls. Definitely, it was definitely underground at the very least. Who knows? Maybe somebody found it in their garden, but it came out of the ground. Yes, it's bird dogs nickel, says Drew. All right, see you later, Drew. Thanks for stopping by. I'll text you if I if next time I stream again. Hey, Todd, good to see you. Yep, uh, well, I don't know if you almost missed me. I'll probably stick around for a little bit, but yeah, you missed an awesome coin roll hunt. Definitely my best one in a while. Well, I haven't coin roll hunted at all in a while, so it was a good, good, uh, good start back, that's for sure. And just while I'm here taking a little bit of a break, I'm going to get up and stretch in a minute. So if anybody wants to send a super chat to get a dunk while I'm taking a break, feel free. Um, the highest super chat tonight is going to get this. Let's put this down here a second. Um, is going to get this gold U.S. Constitution 22 cent stamp in the original first day of issue envelope from 1987 with the uh, normal U.S. Constitution stamp that's canceled on it, um, you know, the non-gold one. And um, the highest super chat tonight is $20 by Sheila. So the super chat would have to be higher than $20 to be in the running to get this. I bought, this came with a coin collection I, I bought probably 10 years ago. And I've just always kept it, hung on to it. It's time to find a new home. Time to find a new home. Uh, the envelope's not in perfect shape. Uh, it was like that when I got it. Um, but the stamp itself is in, in good shape. Looks to be. It's got some kind of protective plastic over it. And I'm throwing in a, uh, a stamp I got from Thailand from something I ordered a long time ago. And I just cut it off the envelope. I thought it was cool. 100 bot stamp from Thailand. It says 1999 on it. It was a long time ago that I got it. But not that long ago. That's for sure. Okay.
Yeah, we might be able to do that, Drew. Sounds good. Just text me sometime. Thank you, Grant. Yes, it was a it was a fun night for sure. Hey, plugs, get out your credit card. Get out your credit card. I ain't letting you off the hook. Where's that ninety nine cents? I'm sure you got some you got some clad sitting around. You can cash in the bank. Hey, Ed, good to see you too. All right, I'm going to stretch for a minute. I've been sitting too long. I got to stretch, and I'll probably clean up while I'm stretching, and then we'll figure out what we're doing. Oh. Like Bot has to lead because he's old. No, I'm just kidding. I think you were going to trying to say it's cold here. Oh, I see. I see what you did. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna stick around for a bit late. Uh, a bit late. Now you got me all tongue tied. But uh, all right, Grant. See you later. Get all the coin wrappers into the recycle. Plug my printer back in because I always use that stand for the coin roll hunting. I'm going to check the Buffalo Nickel Mintages. Because I know that one we found tonight was decent. Yeah, so the 1929D Buffalo Nickel I found, 8.37 million minted, fairly low. You know, it'd fall probably under just the uncommon range. Um, but that's a really good find for in circulation. And just in contrast, the 29D has 8.37 million minted. The 3060 I found, um, 24.8 million. And compare that to the 1937 Philly is 79 million. So it's good to find the D mint ones. Plugs with the $4.99 super chat. He did it. <laughs> he actually did it. All right. We got to give him a really explosive talk. <laughs> Take that, sucker. <laughs> You're funny. All right. Let's do a nice big dunk.
Let's see. Oh wait, let's, I gotta fix this first. All right, Ned's ready to go. Ha, ah, let's see what I can do. We'll make this tough. Ah! We'll do another one for good measure. Lefty. All right. All right, I'm going to get something to show you all real quick here while we're hanging out here for a second. So this was part of the Legos in the dump video that I did recently. So this thing that was built and a bag of parts here, you see. So this is a three-in-one kit. With the same kit, you can build three different things. It's a three-in-one creator, so you can build that. And... Then there's one bigger one in here you can build that, which I think is one that uses all the pieces, or you can build the one that they built, which is that. So you can make these three out of the one set. So I figured maybe I should go ahead and build the big one so I can use up all the pieces and then just set it on a shelf or something. But I don't know if I want to do it now. Um, getting back into the swing of things with the streams, maybe I'll uh, maybe we'll end it here tonight. Maybe we'll end it here. Hey, JD, just, just try that again. Hey, JD, just wanted to say, hey, I'm the guy who used to have the Tulsa Pull Tab Finder channel. Not sure if you remember me or not, but it's not important. Glad to see you still filming. I do remember you, so it's good to see you. I, it's, um, it's been a very long time, uh, but it's good to hear from you. I hope you're doing well. Yeah, I've really slowed down on the detecting these years. Um, you'll have to tell me if you've been out. Um, I haven't done a whole lot of detecting over the last year or two, but I have done some. Um, but yeah, I really slowed down on it. But man, I probably haven't talked to you till since like what, 2014 or 15 or something? Been a long time. But yeah, we're still posting the channel once in a while. Is that a fly swatter hanging on the wall? Bugs getting inside. That is a fly swatter, but I don't use it very often, especially in the winter. It's just where I happen to hang it. Um, but um, no, I don't have to use it a lot. In the summer, uh, more so. But um, I rarely get any bugs in here in the winter. Oh, that's cool. You do a lot of arrowhead hunting now. That's awesome. I need to get into that too because I live in an area in northeast Tennessee where there's a lot of, you can find a lot of arrowheads. But um, 
I normally just don't randomly go up to like farm fields and stuff to look for him. So, uh, but that sounds cool. But yeah, it's kind of hard to give up metal detecting. Even if you slow down, it's like, you just can never quit. You got that treasure hunting in your blood. Just once in a while you get a hankering to just go look for some stuff. It's definitely that way for me. Plug says, I'm 33 silver coins this year, JD, from detecting. Man, it's not easy getting them. Yeah, it's definitely definitely a lot harder from when I started the hobby, that's for sure. Tyler said, picked up a webcam at Value Village a few days ago. Might try streaming someday. Go for it, Tyler. I started streaming early tonight. Normally I do the later streams. I've been here for three hours and it's still only nine o'clock Eastern time. All right. But it, yeah, good to see you. Thanks for stopping in. It's actually funny. Um, I don't know if you remember coin hunting drew that was in the chat here a little bit ago. I think there was a stream like a year ago or something. We were randomly talking about all sorts of old metal detecting and in coin collecting channels from way back in the day. And I'm pretty sure your name came up of like all the people that used that have had YouTube channels that are like really old. Now we're like basically old farts on YouTube. Cause I started my channel in like the end of 2012. A buddy, myself, we go live on Saturday it's a contest one hour at the end. We count our finds and the most win. No prizes, just fun. That sounds fun. I've got um I've got some cool news for you guys too, is actually for as far as detecting. Um, let's just say it's a it's a nice surprise. Uh, I don't know if I want to spill the beans yet. But let's just say the parents that um the parents, no, the the property that I bought that my parents live in now. Um, there was an old road that actually used to go through, um, I, I, I don't know if I should call it a road, but technically I should call it a driveway. Uh, but I found an old driveway that cuts through the property that went to a house that has, had burned down probably 70 years ago. So it's probably Victorian era. It's probably like a Victorian era access, um, to an old house where the old house sat isn't directly on my property. It's kind of in behind it, but the old road cut right through, uh, right through the property. And, um, that the old road is visible on 1954 maps, uh, up until around the time the house burned down. So there could be some older stuff on that property, even though the house was only, uh, the house that my parents live in that's on the property was not built until 1977. So there should, there could be some older stuff lurking around there. Oh, you ordered the Noakda Legend? Interesting. I haven't been keeping up with the new detectors. I don't think I've even looked at that one yet. See you, Tulsa. Simultaneous multi-frequency. Oh, that sounds awesome. What's up, Cash Tango? Thank you. 
All right, guys. I think I'm going to call it tonight because um, I just want to I just want to chill tonight and get a nice warm shower and uh, chill out for the night. Um, but I am planning on doing some. I, I will plan on doing some more. Um, I will plan on doing some more streams and um, some videos here soon. Um, now that I'm kind of back from my break. So, uh, uh, oh yeah, I guess I should end this and say that, um, the highest super chat tonight was Sheila with a $20 super chat. So, um, the stamp from Thailand and the gold U S constitution stamp, um, the first day of issue from 1987 is going to be going to Sheila. Um, so if you're watching this back, make sure you send me an email so I can get this to you. Um, but you're always on the stream. So I'll hold on to it and make sure you get it. Um, even if you claim it late in case you don't watch the end of this stream, I'll catch you on the next one, a uh, next one and make sure you get this, but, um, send me an email link is in the description. JD's variety channel at gmail.com. I'm, I think I may still have your email. If I do, I'll send you an email. Um, so that's going to be going out to you. Um, we had a good night. Anybody that's coming in late, you'll just have to watch the recap cap back a little bit. Found some really awesome finds tonight. It was a great uh, coin roll hunting stream for sure. So I'm going to head out and uh, I will hope to see you all soon. Uh, maybe do another stream like this soon, uh, but for sure should get some normal releases up of uh, various videos like detecting and such. So um, thanks everyone. See you Vaughn man. See you Todd, Linda, Plugs, uh, Tyler. Everyone else, take care, and I'll see you all soon.